Hey yo! Thanks for joining me again. Uh, I know it's been a little while since my last video. I've kind of been going through some stuff. You know, you get you get a little burnt out. You just gotta kind of take a break. Uh, but anyway, um, it also just so happened that all of my projects got delayed. Uh, just shipping, whatever. But that's that's beside the point. Today, I got something in the mail that I have been... I have been wanting for a very long time, and apparently these haven't, th these just straight up don't exist until, I don't know, like two or three weeks ago, when they finally made their entrance here. Uh, anyway, unless you're new to the Game Boy modding scene, you're probably not aware that the Game Boy Advance SP doesn't have any cool uh, aftermarket shells here. Uh, until now. So I just got this in the mail. This is a clear Game Boy Advance SP shell. I think this thing is super cool. Uh, I'm super stoked to get it installed. And uh, I guess that's what I'm going to be doing in my video here today. Uh, it comes with the shell, the buttons. Um, you also got the little hinge cover, the... These parts and that part. Um, I don't know. Pretty cool. Comes with a little baggie with all the parts. Mine in particular, this is a clear one. Came with black buttons and a uh, black covers here for the uh, for the top half. But the hinge covers themselves are, are clear. That's these right here. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera. Um, of course, battery cover, just a generic AGS-001 sticker, and just a generic plastic chintzy lens. I'm not going to be using this. I'm going to be reshelling this Game Boy Advance SP. This one already has a pretty decent lens in it. Not worth the effort, but while you have it apart, that would be when you want to swap it. I'll make a note of that when I get there. Um... I am probably going to be reusing this sticker, though. I don't know that I'm going to transfer this one over. I'm going to try and transfer this sticker over, though. This is, of course, not original. That'd be cool if it was, but such is life. Uh, first thing, I do want to go over my initial impressions. This shell feels phenomenal. Um, I've reshelled a lot of SPs in my day here. I'm pretty sure this is a new mold here. Um, it just feels significantly better than every other shell I've played with. Another thing... Sorry, just grabbing another one here. This is an older console that I've reshelled. Uh, this is, of course, an aftermarket shell here. But, I don't know, it, it just looks... The, the font on the writing on the bottom is different. So, yeah, that's definitely a new mold there. The texture is more pronounced on the clear shell, which makes sense because this is painted. Um, but overall, it just looks like the fit and finish is better. Like along the edges here, the seams. One thing I noticed on pretty much all the aftermarket shells, if you look at where all four of these panels line up, there's always a gap somewhere and that mine happens to be right there. This one, of course you can't tell because I don't have the hinge cover on, but this one doesn't seem to have that issue. But, I don't know, we'll be able to tell more once we get it all together. Uh, another thing I noticed, for some reason, the D-pad is glossy. The rest of these are textured like normal. On an original black, of course this is a 001, but these buttons are from a 101. Uh, these, the A and B buttons are the same across both of them. Mine are a little bit more worn down, I think. The D-pad is also textured like A and B, though, unlike on this one. Start and select are also textured, and the uh, light button... Ooh, that's a doozy. Let's see how well you can see that. But it looks completely different on the aftermarket one. Uh, I, I like this SP, but I'm not going to be reshelling it today. Uh, okay, so, put this away. Oh, and of course you could reshell a 101 if you want. 
um, despite this being the backlit version and this being the frontlit version, they are 100% the exact same shell. You can do whatever you want with them. Just don't mix and match the screens. You can't connect a 101 screen to a 001 shell and vice versa. Um, oh yeah, it also came with these little screwdrivers. I'm not going to be using them though. I already have my own that I like. So to take apart an SP, you need two screwdrivers here. Uh, this one is just a Phillips screwdriver. I forget exactly what size and the uh, text has long rubbed off. But I think it's like a zero or a zero zero or something. Um, this one is a tri-wing or a tri-point. I forget the size as well, but this one never had it on there. Uh, but they only come in like two sizes anyway. Um, anyway, there is a Phillips on the battery cover. And oh, yeah, just shits and giggles. Yeah, it still works fine. Not going to be doing anything with this. Okay. Uh, okay, and then there are six tri-wing screws around the periphery. There are two different size screws here. Uh, you, if this is your first time doing it, you should pay a little bit of attention. But the small screws, because they're, they're all tri-wing, but there are small screws and there are long screws here. Dump that all over the place. So there's the short ones, there's the long ones. Put them right next to each other, you can tell them apart pretty easily. The short ones go in the cart slot and in the battery compartment. The long ones go in the four corners. Let's set those aside. Alright, once you've got all six of those out. The bottom should just lift off here. Now, I haven't ever had this issue before, but just because it hasn't happened to me doesn't mean it won't happen or it can't happen. Uh, these shoulder buttons usually stay in the shell, but if they don't, there are these, uh, like these axles can pull out and then there are these little springs here that can fuck off on you real quick and those will be a pain in the ass to find and they're kind of sharp very easy to put them through your finger okay once you've got the bottom out take off the power switch there the volume slider that is connected that doesn't come off don't have to touch that now you've got three more screws and these are phillips screws not tri-wing They are also just a wee bit shorter than the short screws on the outside. Not tremendously shorter though. Just for uh, comparison. Of course, like I said, one of them's a Phillips, one of them's a Tri-Wing. But it is shorter. Once you've got those three out, I find it's easiest to hold the board in, otherwise it'll fall out. Open the console up. Look at that, the screen still has Game Boy on it. Um, open the console up, and then you can kind of flip it over. Probably going to lose some buttons here, but this just gives you a little bit of slack on the ribbon cable. So that you can... There's a speaker. Release the bail. And this is the kind of bail that slides out, not up. Um, let me get one second here. Okay, just getting a little plastic spudger so I can get in there and poke it. And once you got both sides out, it'll release. Take these buttons, put them all aside. Make sure there are, what, four different membranes here? One for the D-pad, one for A and B, one for the brightness button, and then one for start and select. And then all the little buttons. Mine still has this little black mesh here, which comes on stock Game Boys. You probably want to reuse this if you're reshelling your console. Um, unless you're using a clear shell like I am. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's an aesthetic thing. Your speaker will get dirtier, but that's fine. You can leave your little LED 
light pipes in there. It's not going to make any difference whatsoever since the new shell comes with one. I'll set this aside. All right. So now you want to hold the ribbon up like this so that you can get to the screw down here. That's also Phillips. And this one is super long. It is probably the longest screw in the console. Aside from... Oh no, it's the same length as the uh, tri-wing ones on the outside, but again, it's Phillips. Once you've got that off, the hinge or the ribbon cable cover comes off, and you can slip that ribbon out. But first, I need to do a couple things. I need to get out these five screw covers here. I have not found a good way to do this. I always struggle. I either end up nicking the little rubber cover itself or nicking the uh, the plastic here. And I've already done this console, hence why it has red covers on a blue screen here. So I'm just using the uh, holes I already accidentally made and a little plastic spudger. This isn't the uh, the iFixit spudger. These, this is one of those stupid cheap ones that I got from AliExpress. It was like a 10 pack for two bucks or something like that. They're not nearly as good as the uh, iFixit ones, but one thing that they do have over iFixit is that they're super flexible, which could be a good or a bad thing. But that means these are likely to bend before you um, fuck up one of these holes here. Also, the tips themselves are a little bit thinner. Take that how you will. All right. Once you've got that off, there are five tri-wing screws on a 001 or five Phillips screws on a 101. Uh, there might be some crossover, as in it might have more to do with the year of the console and not necessarily the model, but that's just been every single console I've ever run into. The 101s have Phillips, 001s have Tri-Wing. Anyway, they're all shorty screws. These are the same screws as the short ones that you removed from the bottom. Same head, same length. Once you've got all five of those, close that back up. This top should come off. And for a lot of consoles, the screen ends up sticking to the back as well, which it's doing right here. So you just want to be careful. I'm just going to hinge that up. And then you should be able to work the ribbon out. And I'm going to pop the screen out. It's not actually stuck down with adhesive or anything. I think there's just a little bit of uh, bleed over from the lens. Yeah. And this one might actually already have an aftermarket lens. Oops. Oh, well. All right. Once you've got that off, oh, back to the lens. If you want to replace your lens, now would be the time to do it. This will just peel off here like that. There will be a sticky gasket. You want to leave that on there or take it off. I suppose it doesn't matter too much because this has its own adhesive. And you'd stick that down. Uh, what I like to do, I like to make sure that it's everything's lined up properly because there's no real, I guess, keyways or, or, or guidance as far as getting this attached. It just kind of sticks on there over the screen. Uh, that one's pretty centered, never mind. But either way, it's, it's really easy to get it kind of askew or off-center or anything. Um, actually, you know what? Hang on one second. I'll be right back. I think I am going to put a new lens on this. Okay, sorry about that. I'm back. So I just remembered I had this in my parts drawer. It's got the exact same covering on the back. Interesting. Uh, anyway, this is glass. I might as well put it on here. I've already got it open and I've got the extra lens. So this peels off. I'm not going to start with that corner because that doesn't look right. I'm starting with the top left corner here. And 
just peeling it very slowly. Sorry for any weird noises in the background. I'm filming at my computer desk today instead because I have zero plans to do any soldering. But it's just so much more comfortable in this room. But of course I'm sitting right next to my computer and it's doing a bunch of uh, copying files from a hard drive. Plus, you know, it's got fans, big old fans. Okay, there we go. Don't touch this. You can't really clean it. Um, well, if yours is front lit, don't touch it. If it's back lit, I suppose do whatever the hell you want. But the front lit consoles, uh, the way the uh, front, the light panel is designed, it has a very, very, very small microscopic engraving to try and redirect the light. And I find that if you touch them with your bare fingers and you get your disgusting finger oils all over it, you will never get it all out. You will never clean it. It's just not going to happen. Okay. Some dust on it. I'm going to try wiping it down with a microfiber cloth, though. Oh, this is having the opposite effect that I wanted. If I had some compressed air, this is where I would use it. Okay. Good enough. And good enough. Just stick that down. And ta-da! That's how you replace your lens. Uh, I suppose if you just want to replace your lens, you don't really have to take your... Well, actually, no, you do. So, if you're just replacing your lens, do all that, but backwards, and you're done. Okay. Next thing... But wait, you've already taken it apart completely. No, not yet. Your new shell does not come with hinges. So the top and the bottom are separate. Um, you can, if you want, order new hinges and just use these. And I highly recommend that. It makes it so much easier. But in the meantime, I'm going to try and transfer these over. Um, each hinge, and I've been told that it doesn't really matter, you know, left or right. They're supposed to be the same thing, but I've noticed that one is black, one is white. I don't know if it's just my console. I've noticed this on other consoles too, but anyway, nonetheless, I digress. Um, to pop this out, you kind of have to release four of these tabs at the same time and then push it out from the inside. I want to test out this cool tool that I just designed and 3D printed. Uh, I already... Okay, I lied. I already tested it out on another console and it seemed to work pretty nicely. But the idea is you just line it up and push. Ooh, but it doesn't fit on this side. I'm going to have to adjust my tool or make it shorter or something. Or... 3D printed. That's super easy to do. Okay. Now that fits in there. And I'll uh, tweak this some more. I'll post the ST. Oh, yeah. That is perfect. Okay. So once you've got those both released, 
Uh, I might have to make the tool a little bit longer. Pop it out. I think this actually works better if it's open. Yeah, it does. Okay. So that one's the left one. And that's the right one. Cool. Now we're done with this. I can put my red SP. Well, actually, I don't have enough parts to make a red SP. I can put my blue SP back together. But that's for another video. Okay. So, first thing. Do, do, do. Take your shell here. I'm just going to dump the buttons out because, yeah, that's inevitable that I'm going to get them everywhere. Anyway, dump out the parts as well because I want these covers. You have to take your existing hinge, slide off the old cover, and slide on the new one should not be difficult, quote unquote. And these only go in one way, and actually with this clear shell that's super easy to see. Because you could see. My apologies guys, apparently I can only film for about 20 minutes before my phone overheats. Um, at least in 60 FPS. <laughs> okay, anyway, so back to putting these hinges in. Once you've got everything lined up, it should just snap in. We'll get the other one going here. And there it is. I'm just trying to make sure they're both facing the same direction since it is clear and since you can see that. Okay. So that should snap in all the way. It's not quite flush on this shell like it would be on an OEM shell. You could see, well, those covers aren't OEM, but you could see how it's, it's, uh, it's flush. On here it's not. I don't know if that's just the way these are or what. Whatever, good enough. Take a screen, drop it in here. Place that over the back there. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So before I install this, I'm going to try something here. This is a brand new shell, which means these holes are unthreaded. I'm going to take my Phillips screw here and drive it into these holes just to give myself something to work with. I'm only doing this because the uh, tri-wing screws tend to slip in the driver. I'm doing this. The OEM screws are quite a bit better than the aftermarket ones. So reuse the screws if you can. Especially if you have to... Especially on a new shell. Okay. Over and so those five short tri wings or tri point. And it's probably easiest if you don't just shove them all in a pile, like I did. 
we can tell them apart a little bit easier. And of course, you don't have to put all five of these in right now. I suppose you will eventually. Might as well do it now. Where's the last one? I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to not put the covers on yet, just in case I have to pull this apart again. I'm going to put this on, though. And that's the long Phillips screw. Having a magnetized screwdriver is super helpful, but only if you actually get it in there properly. This one does not want to go down all the way. There we go. I think that's just because I'm threading that hole as I insert the screw. All right, so next, make sure your LED light pipe is in there. I'm actually going to reuse the one from the old shell. These have a weird texture to them that I'm not sure I like. that in there. What next? Let's get the motherboard in here. And again, it's helpful. Give you a little bit more slack on the ribbon if you open that up all the way. And then that should be it. I'm going to use these black buttons. Oh, but you know what I am going to do? I'm going to use the original membranes instead of the membranes that it came with. The original ones usually feel a little bit better to press. Though in my case, these might also be aftermarket. Not sure. Don't recall. Okay, now I'm going to insert the little foam mesh and my speaker. There it is. And that should. It's down like that. Now it's those three short Phillips screws. And the holes are marked. Ooh, that's not a Phillips screwdriver. There we go. The holes are marked on the PCB. There's just the one above the cart reader and then the two by the cart reader anchors. And this last one. 
Uh, oh, you know what? Eh. Try it with this one here. I'm going to try and thread these holes ahead of time. If you do this, be super careful because if you put a long screw down these short holes, well, if you put it all the way down, you're going to have a bad time. Luckily, one of the cool things about this being transparent is that you can actually see it as it's going down the hole. Bow chicka bow wow. Um, you know what I mean. And one more. It's probably completely unnecessary for this shell with how smooth this is going. But there are some aftermarket shells where I really wish I'd had done that. Okay. So now that's down. That's down. From the original shell, I'm going to salvage this square nut here. It goes... Ooh. in here you can on most shells it doesn't want to stay in the hole but in this one it doesn't even want to go in okay and you do want to leave this blue plastic here this is insulation so it doesn't short out on the motherboard but otherwise that's off that's off This should just sit down. Indeed it did. Excellent. So, six more screws. Again, the four long ones go in the two, or in the four corners, excuse me. The two short ones go in the cartridge slot and the battery compartment. I'm taking that back. Put the battery, battery cover. Battery cover has a Phillips captive screw, so it's not going to fall out on you, but that's it. That's all you need to do. Oh, just kidding. I've got a couple things here. So, I'm going to use, actually, I'm not going to use these. Uh, I'm going to save these black pads for another shell here. I have somewhere, I lost them. Um, I have little gray pads that I bought for something else. Ended up not using them, but I think they should look good with this shell here. Uh, here they are. Sorry. Uh, this is actually what you get when you buy the screw hole covers on Mortoff Games. These gray ones, but I think these are way too big. Holy shit. Is that right? No, oh, no, that's fine. So the Mortoff Games ones look like they have an adhesive back on there. The ones that this shell came with do not. 
So these little ones, it doesn't matter how you insert them. Front's the same as the back. These more tough ones do. There we go. I like that they're slightly oversized. I thought they were way too big at first, but I was mistaken there. But because they're slightly oversized, it means they should not fall out ever. Unless I remove them, especially with the adhesive backing. The weird thing though, and I'm guessing that's because these are just cut out of a big sheet is that the big ones don't have the uh, convex surface like the aftermarket and OEM ones do. No, but the big one is not fitting at all. I might try and trim that down or I don't know. Or maybe this is so you can create, make it convex. You have to fold it in. Yeah, I don't know. That's not working. I'll play with that more. But just for, uh, oops, that's not a cover, that is. Just so you can see what I'm talking about here. That red one is the proper size. And I lined it up on the bottom edge there. Okay. So yeah, just put in your screw hole covers. Don't forget about your uh, logo there. You can leave that blank or your new shell it does come with a logo. Just peel off the adhesive backing there. Stick that down. You can reuse your original if you want. I'm not going to reuse this one because I'm going to use this shell for something else, but you could just poke it out. There's a little hole there. I don't recommend using a metal instrument, but maybe, oops, maybe plastic. Just poke it in that hole. It should push that up enough where you can get something in there. Uh, but if you use metal, or even in this case, it leaves a little mark on the back there. Uh, and be careful, even though I used the original screw, I guess I screwed it down just a hair too tight. And it left a mark on the surface here. Uh, the one in the back doesn't really matter because that's under the cover. You can't see it. But Okay, so I had to let my phone cool down again. I took this opportunity to try and trim these two big ones, make them fit in there. Didn't really come out the way I was hoping. Um, might leave them. Just say screw it because I doubt I'm going to be using this thing too much anyway. But, you know, overall, first impressions, I'm really digging this shell. Oh, I don't forget to add your logo in there. Uh, you can, I don't know if I already went over this and on camera at least, uh, but you can reuse your original if you like. I recommend it because it's going to look a little bit better than the aftermarket ones. Um, you can pop that out, just you know, hit this with a hair dryer or something just to warm it up a little. And then there's a little itty bitty hole there. Uh, if you use a plastic tool, you can push it out a little, but be careful because you might mark up the, the uh, logo a little bit. And you definitely will mark it up if you use a metal tool. Um, but anyway, yeah, like I said, first impressions, really good. Um, definitely the first thing I noticed is that just the overall fit and finish of the shell, like I was saying in the beginning, it is much better than the regular aftermarket ones that I've seen. Uh, so far, I'm super happy with it, uh, but I guess time will tell. I kind of got to use it before I can really judge it too much. Um, but... 
yeah, it feels really good. And yeah, I guess, oh yeah, I'll tweak this tool a little bit and post the STL. Oh my God, this made it so much easier to reshell. Um, but if you guys have any ideas on what I should do with this, because this is, this is what it looked like when I started. Obviously that knob was a little bit too long and this print came out worse, but whatever. And obviously the tool itself is a little too long, but if you all have any suggestions, I'm definitely open. Um, and I did end up buying two of these shells because when these first came out, it was just these clear ones. It wasn't clear, it wasn't smoke, it wasn't the blue ones. Uh, but now there's the clear, there's the blue tinted clear, the dark or the black tinted, I guess you could call it smoke. Um, and now there's atomic purple. I had originally purchased two of these shells because I planned on painting one of them, but then they came out with the color that I wanted to paint it. So now I don't know what to do with it. Uh, but if you guys have any suggestions, I'm open to that. Otherwise, I'm leaning towards just painting it with some Timia transparent red paint. Make a cool red shell like um, Game Boy RD made. I'll throw a picture in here or something. Um, but otherwise, sorry guys, that ended up on the long side. I meant for that to be a quick one. But I underestimated how long it takes me to reshell an SP. Oh! I can't believe I forgot the sticker here. Wipe that off because I've been handling it. My fingers are a bit greasy. Peel off that sticker there. Oh, that is not centered. That is not centered. These are kind of a pain in the butt, and I accidentally dropped it. Uh huh, there we go. Well, there we go. I'd say that was, this is by far one of the best SP shells I've ever purchased, aside from like OEM or whatever, but that's beside the point. This is, this is super cool, especially because it's transparent. Anyway, I could go on all night, so I think I'll stop for now, and I will bid you folks a uh, good evening or good morning or whatever the hell it is over there. Uh, but... You know, keep on being awesome. Thanks.